so from what situation, whatever bondage that you find yourself in. I'm talking about the bondage of sin. You know, today, so many of us, the only thing we talk about bondage is poverty and all that, but I'm not talking about poverty. I'm talking about sin. The Lord delivered Sister Kamala from sin, and he will deliver you from sin. That is why we are here. There are so many who are walking around having straight jacketed in sin that you cannot turn to the right, turn to the left, you just go straight in sin. And the Bible says the way, there is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof is the way of death. My beloved, tonight, if you've heard this testimony, it is only right that you yield your life to Jesus Christ. The same Lord that delivered Sister Kamala will save and set your soul free from the power of sin also. Hallelujah. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. You are invited. The chairs over here are for you to sit on. And we invite you to come and join with us tonight. Okay. Um, Sister Mrs. Dora So Pimpon is coming to read for us a portion from the scriptures. Uh, Miss Vidal is some people will be reading for us from the book of Proverbs chapter 29. Proverbs chapter 29. Amen. Amen. Proverbs, Proverbs chapter 29. He that being often reproved, hardeneth his neck, shall suddenly be destroyed, and that without remedy. When the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. But when the wicked beareth rule, the people mourn. Whoso loveth wisdom rejoiceth his father, but he that keepeth company with harlots spendeth his substance. The king by judgment establisheth the land, but he that receiveth gifts overthroweth it. A man that flattereth his neighbor spreadeth a net, a net for his feet. In the transgression of an evil man there is a snare, but the righteous go sing and rejoice. The righteous considereth the cause of the poor, but the wicked, the wicked regardeth not to know it. Scornful men bring a city into a snare, but wise men turn away wrath. If a wise man contendeth with a foolish man, whether he rage or laugh, there is no rest. The bloodthirsty hate the upright, but the just seek his soul. A fool uttereth all his mind, but a wise man keepeth it in till afterwards. If a ruler hearken to lies, all his servants are wicked. The poor and the deceitful man meet together, the Lord lighteneth both their eyes. The king that faithfully judgeth the poor, his throne shall be established forever. The rod and reproof give wisdom, but a child left to himself bringeth his mother to shame. When the wicked are multiplied, transgression increaseth, but the righteous shall see their fall. Correct thy son, and he shall give thee rest. Yea, he shall give the light unto thy soul. Where there is no vision, the people per perish, but he that keepeth the law, happy is he. A servant will not be corrected by words, for though he understand, he will not answer. Seest thou a man that is hasty in his words? There is more hope of a fool than of him. He that the delicately bringeth up his servant from a child, shall have him become his son at the length. An angry man stirreth up strife, and a furious man ab aboundeth in transgression. A man's pride shall bring him woe, but honor shall uphold the humble in spirit. Whoso is partner with a thief, hateth his own soul. He heareth cursing, and be, be it not. 
The fear of man bringeth a snare, but whoso putteth his trust in the Lord shall be saved. Many seek the Lord's favor, but every man's judgment cometh from the Lord. Verse 27. An unjust man is an abomination to the just, and he that is upright in the way is abomination to the wicked. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Today, the title for this message is a question. And the question is, what will happen to me if I constantly reject the word of God? What will happen to me if I continue to reject the word of God? The message that you had read tonight, the opening statement was that he who is often corrected, the word of God corrects us. The word of God reproves us. The word of God sets us in the right way. The word of God is that which brings us into reconciliation with God. So that if you and I reject the word of God, there is a consequence. Hence the question, what is the consequence? for rejecting God's word? Or what is the consequence for constantly procrastinating, constantly postponing, saying tomorrow, 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 what will be the consequence? We can find that in the book of Proverbs chapter one, and in the book of Proverbs chapter 29, and verse one. In chapter 29, that my uh, that Delali so beautifully read, it goes in this way. It says, He, he who is often corrected, he that being corrected or often reproved, hardens his neck. He who is often corrected or reproved, but hardens his neck, shall suddenly be destroyed without remedy. That is a very, very hard word. That is a very, very hard consequence. A very serious one. It's saying that when you and I continue, as we hear God's word every day, every Friday evening, you walk into one of the stores over here. You hear the word of God preached. You hear the word of God preached even when it is raining. You hear the word of God preached even when it is snowing. You hear the word of God pre preached when, even when it was very scorchingly hot. And you reject it. It says you shall suddenly be destroyed. And when we use the word suddenly, it means that when you least expect it, it will come. Your destruction will come. And it will be without remedy. That there's not going to be any restraint. Why should that come so furiously upon you and I? It is because our God is long suffering. His desire is for none of us to see destruction. Hence, He sends His servants to proclaim His word to you and I every day, whether it is raining or sunlight. As you have today, we could easily have locked ourselves up in the sanctuary for safety. And as I come to this doctor, I'm going to ask those of us who are in the sanctuary to please come out. It is not raining. Let us come out so that the word of God that I'm preaching, the people listening to it will really obey it and respect it. That we are here, even when it is raining, we hear the word of God. Why? It's because your soul is very, very important. The Lord wants you and I to know that you are so precious to him that he is going to even allow his servant in, to stand in the rain to declare his righteous ordinances unto all of us. That is why we are here today. And what is God's judgment? In the book of John chapter 3 verse 16, 
The Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, so that whosoever believes in him should not die, should not perish, but have everlasting life. That word, whosoever, that includes you. It denotes you. Whosoever. It doesn't matter where you are in life. You may have been, you may be the worst murderer, the most murderous person on earth. You may be the most filthy person, the filthiest person on earth. You may be a scumbag. No matter what names have been given to you, labeled you, the whosoever covers you. That God gave his only begotten son so that if you and I will believe on him, we will not die, we will not perish, we will not be condemned unto hell, but we shall receive eternal life. So that if this message is being constantly proclaimed to you and I, and we continue to harden our hearts, where the word of God is saying the consequence of that is your sudden destruction without remedy. Beloved, it is my prayer today that you and I will pay heed to this word of God that has come to us. In the same book of Proverbs 29 verse 2, it says, When the righteous are in power, the people rejoice. But when wicked men are in authority, the people are cast restrained. The people mourn. When in our world today, most of the people in authority because of their wickedness and because of their unrighteousness, the people are mourning and are grieving. Why? Because we have people in leadership and in authority who have no regard for Jesus Christ and have no regard for the poor and the downtrodden. They will go so much, so they will travel so many, many miles to trample down the will of the poor and the downtrodden. That is how wicked the people in authority in our world today are. And so you see the whole world is mourning, is grieving, the masses of the people. Why? Because the people who are in authority are not God-fearing people. They have no fear of God. They may pronounce the name of God, they may use the name of God as a pretext. So you have leaders come and they will say, God bless you. Well, what do they do behind the God bless you is what you are to ask. It is easy for anybody to say, God bless you. And it is easy for anybody to say, this is God's country. We use flattering words to flatter people because we want to buy the sympathy of the people. We know most people are religious. So when you use the name of God, you soften their hearts. But God's word is saying, when the wicked are in authority, the people grieve, they mourn. The people grieve, they are cast restraint. This is what the book of Proverbs 29 verse 2 is saying. And so if you are listening and you find yourself as a leader and you are wicked, know that the word of God in chapter 1 and verse 1 of Proverbs 29 applies to you also. He who is often corrected by having his neck shall suddenly be destroyed and without remedy. My beloved, there is a judgment day coming. There is a day of judgment coming. And it is coming upon the whole earth. The only place that you and I can hide is in Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Besides Christ, there is no hiding place. There is no hiding place. You may build fortresses, you may build underground fortresses where you go into in case there is nuclear war. You may go and hide in that uh, nuclear shelter. But listen, that will not provide you any way of escape from the judgment of God that is coming. The only way of escape and the only shelter is Jesus Christ and Him crucified. So tonight, my beloved, the question again, what will be the consequence of my rejecting God's reproof of God's word of correction? Well, the consequence to that is 
Your sudden destruction without remedy. Our sudden destruction without remedy. Last week, most of us were witnesses of the hailstorm that came. There were so many of us who were trapped in traffic. Some were afraid that their windshields will be damaged and will cause havoc on the highway. You are so scared and so frightened. So now take that and multiply it by tenfold. And you can understand what is going to happen on that day of judgment. When the Lord releases, he has so much arsenals. He has so much in his arsenal. God can use. God can use hail stuff. God can use mosquitoes. God can use millipedes. God can use anything, any fly, common fly. God will use that to bring judgment upon our world. My beloved, none of our arsenals that we have, our weapons that we have can stand or withstand the arsenals that God has. God may not use nuclear weapons. He will only use mosquitoes. And we'll find ourselves running away from, from the mosquitoes. That is what God is. That is why we need to run to Him tonight. Jesus Christ is calling us unto salvation. He is calling us unto repentance. The Bible says, for God so loved the world. He so loved the world. God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. His only begotten Son so that whosoever, whosoever, it doesn't matter how rich you are, how poor you are, it doesn't matter how wicked you are or how, how kind you are. It's a whosoever. It doesn't matter the color of your skin. In fact, God who created the whole world, who created humankind and gave us all the races, looked upon all, when he looked at Adam and Eve, he said, that which God said has done is that it was good. He knew that there was going to arise out of Adam and Eve many different races, different colors. So when God looks from above and looks at the whole races, it looks so beautiful in his sight. That is what God has done. So it doesn't matter your the race, all it boils down to one thing. If you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior, if you repent from your wicked ways, if you turn from your adulterous way, if you repent from your homosexual way, your ways of lesbianism, homosexuality, transgenderism, and all the adulteries and fornications, you repent and turn away from all those things and yield your life to Jesus Christ, my beloved, you will escape the judgment of God that is coming upon the earth. Today it has been made, it is made unpopular. They say, well, when, we, when you preach against those sins, you are so mean. My beloved, no, 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 that God is not mean. It is in God's word. And all that we are bringing unto you are cautionary measures. What will happen to you and I when we reject the consequences, reject the consequences of our lives? The Bible says, Proverbs 29 and verse 1, He who is often corrected, he who is often reproved, he who is often corrected but hardens his neck or hardens his heart shall suddenly be destroyed and without remedy. Proverbs chapter 1, God is saying, because I called and you did not respond and you rejected to my corrections, it says in the days of your calamity, I will mock at you. When your calamities come upon you like a flood, God says, I will laugh at your calamity. I will clap my hand. Can you imagine God laughing at your calamity? But that is the consequence that you have when you reject the word of God. That is the consequence that comes upon you when you become so proud and arrogant. When you feel like you can, you pull yourself on your own bootstrings and that you can save your own self. No, 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 no. There is a day coming when you desperately need God. And that is when God says, I will laugh at your calamity. My beloved, it is my prayer tonight that you and I will not come to that point where the Lord says, you will call upon me, but I will not hear. Let me give you a biblical story. 
in the book of Samuel, there was a king by name Saul. Saul was ordained, he was anointed by God to be king of Israel. He had a prophet by name Samuel. Samuel was a prophet of the God's own heart. He was a good counsel and a guide to Saul. He instructed Saul to do something. And Saul, instead of Saul waiting patiently to do what Samuel told him to do, Saul ran ahead of God. Ran ahead of the prophet Samuel. Not only that, when God told him to go and destroy the Amalekites, and that those Amalekites in your life need to be destroyed, Samuel told Saul, go and destroy all the Am Am Amalekites. Make sure that everything is destroyed. Well, when Saul went, he said for himself, the fat cows, he said for himself, Agat the king. And when he was met by Samuel, he told Samuel that I have saved this so I can sacrifice unto God. My beloved, that is our world today, especially amongst us believers. We love the world so much so that we want to save the things that God considers an abominable thing, save them and bring them to the house of God under the pretext that we are going to offer them as a sacrifice. So today we have in our churches, we don't preach against sin anymore for fear that we will lose money because money has become our God. We don't preach against things that are abominable unto God. Like Saul, we brought those things into the house of God, nursing them and making them fat. Not to sacrifice unto God, but unto our own self. That was Saul. And so David, and so Samuel told Saul, Saul, because of your disobedience, because of your rebe rebellion, God has rejected you. God has rejected you. My beloved, please don't be among that crowd who God has rejected, but you are not aware of it. Because God rejected Saul, the Bible tells us that the Spirit of God left Saul. The Spirit of God left Saul. My beloved, when you and I willfully reject the Word of God, and we continue to cuddle, we continue to cuddle like a pillow, sin, we embrace sin so much. In fact, we carry it on our head, we carry sin on our shoulder, we carry sin in our armpits and in our arms, in fact, sin is a blanket that we wrap around ourselves. Sin is the outfit, the garment that we wear. We love it so much. We swim in sin. We die in sin. Everything about us is sin. We love it. If we should continue to do that, my friend, the Spirit of God will not dwell in a, a person who loves and doubles in sin. And that includes Whoever calls himself a bishop, a pastor, apostle, whatever you are, God is no respecter of persons, and He does not make allowances for those who call themselves, quote unquote, man of God. In fact, we are going to receive the most severest of the punishment. So, double with sin. And so the Spirit of God left Saul. So, and when the Spirit of God left Saul, an evil spirit, an evil tormenting spirit came upon Saul. The consequence of having your heart against the word of God, the consequences of having your heart against God's reproof, opens the door for an evil spirit to come upon your life and to torment you will not give you rest day and night. That is what God is talking about in the book of Proverbs as a one. He said, when your calamity comes upon you, I will laugh. I will mock. Saul's calamity was so severe that now he was living in fear. He made enemies for himself. A man, a righteous man became his enemy. And we find that in the book of Proverbs 29, talking about an upright man. He, upright man, is an offense to the wicked. David was an offense to Saul. Here is a man whose heart was pure before God, loved God so much,
fought on the behalf of the Israelites, defeated a man that was a threat to the whole of the Israeli, uh, the Israeli, Israeli army. His name was Goliath. David, this little David, conquered, defeated him. And just by the mere fact that the women were saying, David killed his 10,000 and saw his thousands, Saul was filled with the spirit of jealousy. What they could kill David? So much was his fury and his, his rage against David. That is how the evil tormenting spirit had come upon him. My beloved, when you constantly reject the word of God, the spirit that will control and rule your life is not the spirit of God. It is an evil tormenting spirit. Your life will be plagued with depression. Your life will be plagued with all forms of depression, stress, frustration, nothing that you do will go on well. You wonder why people from so many use wicked and evil methods to acquire wealth? There is something going on on the inside. And they think wealth is the one that will assuage their thirst or their, their, their dryness. So they constantly will find room to exploit, to extort, all because the spirit in them is not a good spirit. That was Saul. So eventually, what did Saul do? Saul was crying unto God on a day when the children of the Philistines had come against Israel. They were going to war. And here is Saul. He was crying unto God, and God did not hear him. The Bible says, and Saul prayed and cried unto God, God did not hear him. Why? Because he was constantly reproved and corrected by his own son, Jonathan, who told him, he said, what has David done? David doesn't seek your destruction. Why do you want to kill this young man? Samuel counseled him. He didn't take the counsel of Samuel. He wanted to do his own thing. Just like tonight you are hearing God's word coming to you, that the wages of sin is death, the wages of sin is death, you hearing it, but you rejecting, you harden your heart. That was so. So was so hardened, so hardened against God's word, so much so that God had to close his ear. As in Isaiah chapter 59. In Isaiah 59, he's saying that the Lord's hands are not shut, that he cannot say, nor his ears clogged that he cannot hear. It is because of our sins and our iniquity. So the sins of Saul has become like a mountain. God can, cannot see, hear, or say. That is what happens. Sin, the Bible says, sin is a reproach. Sin is a reproach. And when you are stubbornly stubborn and rebelliously rebellious, when these are the characteristics of your character, my beloved, the consequence of it is sudden destruction and without remedy. So what happened to Saul? He called unto God and God did not hear. The Bible says that, and God did not hear the, the, the cry of Saul. So Saul now decided to go and consult with witchcraft. When you reject God in your life, and you are facing a very chaotic situation, consequence, you resort to seeking direction from palm readers, palm readers, uh, what you call the other ones, uh, psychics, and all in all, you consult with those people for answers to your problem. Some spend day and night hospital around the clock. I know that. I have been there before, especially with the hospital. When I asked myself into eating stupor, when I knew that I don't have to eat like a cockroach, and eventually I became so sick, I knew the what was the problem, but I wanted to take a shortcut. Eventually, when I took the right one, and I went home and sat God's face through fasting and prayer, the Lord healed me. And you, so many of us are facing the same situation. You have rejected God. You don't hear the voice of God anymore. And God is not hearing your cry. Instead of you going before God with fasting and prayer, you go to seek after palm readers. 
necromancers, sorcerers, witches, and wizards. Secret societies, you want to belong to secret societies, doing things that you know are contrary to the will of God. All because you want a shortcut, you don't want to change your lifestyle. You don't want to invite Jesus Christ into your life. He is the only one who can deliver you from the consequence of rejection. Rejection is when. So what happened to Saul? Saul called upon God and God will not hear. So Saul went and sought after a sorcerer and wanted a sorcerer to call out the spirit of Samuel, Samuel who he refused to hear. Now he's going back to Samuel. Many of us one day will be like that rich man who did not want to take care of Lazarus. He rejected Lazarus' entities. He would rather give Lazarus bones that have been licked by dogs. Instead of giving him good food, Lazarus dies, he's in the bosom of Abraham, the rich man also dies. And now here he is, pleading with Abraham to send men down to go and preach to his brothers. Some of us will be begging, but it will be too late, because the word of God says it is appointed unto man once to die, after that the judgment. What is the consequence of rejecting the word of God? Sudden destruction without remedy. Saul met his sudden destruction. It took one, one spear, one, one arrow, one arrow from a Philistine. And that arrow went straight through the back, into the, through the back, through the stomach, the heart of, of Saul. Eventually Saul had to take his own life. He fell on his own spear because he would not want to die at the hand of a Philistine. My beloved, the wages of sin is death. The consequences of rejecting God's word is sudden destruction. Because Saul rejected the reproof of God, he met his death. It was a sudden one. It was a sudden one. He committed suicide. My beloved, God does not want you to commit suicide. God does not want you to die. God does not want you to perish. God does not want you to die in your sin. He wants your soul saved. That is why Jesus Christ came into this world and died on the cross of Calvary. That is why Jesus Christ shed his blood at Calvary for your redemption, for your salvation, for your deliverance. Tonight, as you hear God's word, harden not your heart. The book of 2 Corinthians 5, it says, Now is the day of salvation. Now, behold, now. And as you hear God's word, don't harden your heart. Don't harden your heart. Because hardening your heart will bring sudden destruction. Something that you have, you have not even thought of will come upon you. And that day there will be no turning back. Why don't you yield your life to Jesus Christ today? My beloved, why don't you yield your life to Jesus Christ? Turn away from your adulterous lifestyle. Turn away from your life of homosexuality and lesbianism. Turn away from your life of, of prostitution. Turn away from your life of transgenderism. Turn away from your life of bestiology. Turn away from your wicked ways. Jesus Christ is tenderly calling you today. Listen, this is not a hate speech. Satan always wants to paint that which you need to hear as a hate speech so that you will continue in your, in your, in your wallowing in sin. Because Satan wants you in hell with him. But God is calling us unto repentance. Repent and turn from your arrogant pride. Repent and turn from your arrogant pride. Repent, re repent and turn away from your arrogant pride. From your oppressiveness. Stop oppressing the poor. Stop oppressing the downtrodden. Stop oppressing the widow. Jesus Christ is calling us unto repentance, my beloved. 
Today is your day of salvation. Would you give your life to Jesus Christ? He is tenderly calling all of us unto repentance. Would you give your life to him? Would you give your life to Jesus? This sin tonight is going to be shown on the day of judgment. That a day when it was raining, it was pouring. When we stood in the rain to declare God's righteous judgment. And when we stood in the rain, then God had to stop the rain because he saw that we saw the reason why he will allow the rain to come to find out whether we will care so much or care enough for the dying souls. Because the rain has no respect for a dying soul. Whether you are dying in poverty or not, the rain will not say because you are dying in poverty, it will not pour, it will rain. And so the same way the word of God has come tonight. And this thing tonight will be shown on that day of judgment. And if the Lord asks you, why didn't you give your life to me on that day? What will your answer be? What will your answer be? Will you say it was raining? That is why I didn't go. Then the Lord will say, but how about my servant who stood in the rain to preach his, your, my word? You see, so you have no excuse. Whether rain or shine, you give your life to Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ is tenderly calling tonight. Jesus Christ is tenderly calling tonight. Would you give your life to him? He is tenderly calling. Your life is so, life precious. Is so precious unto the Lord that he wants us to be in this rain to declare his word unto you. Your soul is so precious. Would you give your life to him tonight? Would you give your life to him tonight? This is God's word. In a moment, I'm going to ask every one of you, wherever you are, wherever you are, you may be at the grocery store shopping. You may be pumping gas. You may be perhaps drinking yourself into drunken stupor. Wherever you are, take a moment. And we're going to pray with you. Your soul is so special to God. Your soul is so precious to God. That is why Jesus Christ came to die. He died so that you will be set free. Will you give your life to him tonight? You will lose nothing but the things that you don't need in your life. You will lose nothing except for the things that you, are, you don't need in your life. Those are the things that you don't, the Lord, that is the thing that you lose. The Lord will take them all away. Second Corinthians 5 verse 17. If a man be in Christ, he's a new creation. If you give your life to Jesus Christ tonight, you become a new creation. All things will pass away. Everything will become new. Your evil desires and evil passions will go away. Everything will become new. Every pleasures of the world will vanish and the love for heavenly things will come. You become a new creation. The joy of the Lord will be your strength. The peace of God that passes all understanding will be a gift, a precious gift the Lord will deposit in your soul and in your heart. Would you receive the Lord tonight? Would you receive the Lord tonight? Hallelujah. Jesus it's passing this way, eh, this way, eh, this way, eh, Jesus is passing this way, eh, it's passing this way right now. Hallelujah, Jesus is passing this way. Oh, this way is passing this way. Oh, Jesus is passing this way. Hey, he's passing this way right now. Hallelujah, Jesus. He is passing this way. He's passing this way. Oh, Jesus is passing this way. Hey, it's passing this way right now. 
but come to save the knowledge in Jesus Christ. Week after week, time after time, your word has gone out on these grounds. And people are still walking. People are still not paying attention to your word. But the time will come when Jesus will step out, out of heaven. And Lord, we pray that Heavenly Father will be ready. He told us before he went away, the most important thing is for us to be ready when he calls. You call so many times, and yet the Heavenly Father, we will not receive your son. We pray to Heavenly Father this night, many souls will come to save the knowledge all over this world. They will know Jesus this night. This will be the night. And Lord, then lives will be so different that others will know the difference. We thank you, dear Heavenly Father, for this opportunity tonight. How you have lifted the rain, oh God, is a miracle. It's been raining off and on all day, but you lifted up for us to get the message out today in song and from your word, the Bible. We thank you and we praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. Grace and peace to all of you tonight. It's such a wonderful, blessed privilege to be out here with you all. God is so loving, loving that he allowed us to be here. And we are here because we care and love you. We want to invite you to join us, to fellowship with us, not only here on Friday night, but we want you to come and join with us on Sunday. Fellowship time is 1045. The Sunday school is 930. You're welcome to join us. We are a friendly church. God loves you so much. He wants you to join us because the word says that we are not to forsake the assembling of ourselves together. So we invite you to join us every Sunday, Wednesday we have Bible study, and of course on Friday we have outdoor crusade. We thank God for your being here, all of you who have listened. We thank God for you and we pray for you in Jesus' name. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Patient of days, as old as you are, as old as you are, you remain the same. Ancient of
You see the clouds, the gathering clouds? It tells you that God wanted his word declared that after the word, then the clouds will come back and we'll have our rain. This is what God has done. Hallelujah. He is giving us the showers of blessing. The spirit, the, I mean, the sprinkling is for, is for our blessing. But as we depart from here, the heavy one will come. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Listen, all these things that are happening in our, before our eyes are all things that are going to be rehearsed to us on that day of judgment. The handiwork of God, what God is doing, is a marvel. Human cannot comprehend it. Our human mind cannot hold it. But that is what God is doing. Let us yield our life to him. Let us yield our life to him. He's the only one that you and I can say. Listen, on July 6th, July 6th, 3 o'clock in the afternoon, we're going to have a huge stage. There's going to be a new stage over here. It's called Just for Sale. There will be several choirs here ministering the word of God, the word of God in song. So please keep it on your in your diary. Put it down that on July 6th, 3 o'clock, just for sale. Jesus People Celebration. Just for sale. We invite you all. It's free. There's going to be food. And there's going to be the proclamation of the word of God through singing. And there will be testimonies, spoken words. There's going to be a big tent over here. So please, put it down in your diary. And come, free of charge. Amen. It's free of charge. Come as you are. Oh, well, anyway, let me take that back. Come, dress a little decent. Don't go and buy suits and say you are coming. No, no, no. Come close. Come close. Moderate. Dress in moderation. Come dress. But not in a $5,000 this thing. Just come dress. A casual, is that casual? Is that right? Yeah. Dress casual. And make sure you are clothed. Covered up, covered down. Yeah. <laughs> That's why I said I had to be careful not to say come as you are. Because if some, if some will come up here as they are actually. And we don't want that. Hallelujah. So come this great clothed and we welcome everyone. 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 It's free of charge. Come, 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 come and let us celebrate Jesus. Jesus people celebration July 6th. Hallelujah. Amen. God bless you all. City of Greensboro, County of Guilford, State of North Carolina, Nation of America and the world. God bless you. May the Lord grant that all of us will come to know him. And may his fear come upon us. That we will reverence him. In Jesus' name. Amen. Grace and peace.